Greetings everyone, and welcome back to another installment in the iWish series. A series in which I investigate rather dubious tech products sold on various sites around the web just to see if they're any good. Most of the time they are not, but I like to buy this stuff so you don't have to. However, once again, you folks generously donated to see this on the channel, so a massive thank you to all of these folks displayed on screen. I really do appreciate the kind gesture, and I'm sorry that this video has taken so long to get out, but here it is finally, and I hope you'll all enjoy this one. It is most likely going to be a very, very long video. You asked for a review on this device, and I'm going to deliver it to you all. So, the original plan months ago was to buy an S23 Ultra clone, but since I wasn't getting anywhere with that with the item getting refunded after 10 minutes every time I purchased one, we all decided, let's just find something else that piques our curiosity, and this is when we found the phone I'm taking a look at today. And then I kind of found an S23 Ultra clone locally, and that video has already been published, if you have haven't seen it, I'll cut it up there if you want to take a look at that. But this weirdo phone that I'm taking a look at has been on my radar for quite a long time and it's just sort of sat there on AliExpress basically with no one purchasing it. So let's see if this 170 Australian dollar streaming phone that says made by streamers for streamers can live up to its name. So before we jump into the listing for the phone, which hopefully shouldn't take too long, there's going to be timestamps in the description as well as the pinned comment so you can skip along to wherever you would like to in the video. I want to look at the listing because there's some funny things in it, but if you don't want to stick around for that and skip straight to the unboxing or wherever, and that's absolutely no problems. And another thing, if YouTube adds more advertisements into the video, and you just get ad after ad after ad, grab yourself ad block if you're on PC, or revanced if you're on mobile to stop them from popping up every three seconds. I try and minimize them down, but they get put back in there automatically, so you're all already doing more than enough by simply clicking on this video and listening to me ramble on about these random cheapo devices. All right, with that lengthy intro out of the way, let's take a look at the listing for the Huibo 23 megapixel camera, 4G LTE phone, 4G plus 64G GPS, Wi-Fi, dual SIM, AI ultra wide angle front double camera 4700 milliamp hours. And currently on AliExpress, in the standard package, which is all the accessories and the phone box, you're looking at $162.85 Australian, which I'll display a currency conversion chart on screen to give you a rough idea of how much this costs around the world. Including the shipping tax that's on top of it, I paid a total of $178.58. But I'll just display the currency conversion chart for what the phone is actually going for on AliExpress. Now, since this isn't a knockoff device, I can put a link in the description if you wanted to check it out. You're not obligated to, and it's not an affiliate link, but if you want to go check it out just for curiosity sakes, you absolutely can. Now, as I was saying earlier in the intro, this has basically just been sitting on AliExpress and no one's purchased it. Well, we've got one review and one sold, even though I purchased it from these guys. But the review says, broke down after two weeks. The seller, after trying to say, turn off and do it, stopped responding. The phone is an expensive, low quality toy. Half of the menu is in English. I do not recommend the product or the seller. So take that how you will. I can say I've had this phone for about a month and it hasn't let me down so far. Back to the listing though, if we have a look at the picture of the phone, camera mobile phone with the rear camera saying 16 plus 5 megapixels, which the megapixel count on the rear and front cameras, they're switched around. 4,600 milliamp hour battery, 4 gig of RAM and 64 gigs of storage and 6.0 Lynch's, not David Lynch just Lynch's. Now, if it was actually spelt like David Lynch, then I'd really recommend you all go watch Twin Peaks. The whole gimmick with this device is that it's a streaming phone, so it comes with the remote that you've seen in the thumbnail. I will talk about that very soon. Here are some quick specs that are shown in the listing. So we've got the name of the phone, which is the Huibo, or Hu no, there's no other way to pronounce it, actually. HB01 4G global version. We've got the bands list on screen, which we've got 2G, 3G, and 4G, as well as LTE, TDD. And with the SIM cards, you can have dual nano SIMs with both running at 4G or one nano SIM and a micro SD card. The OS is just Android, but I can tell you all it's Android 8.1. It's not shown anywhere in the listing whatsoever. Qualcomm Snapdragon 625, 4 gigs of RAM, 64 gigs of ROM. The display is a 6.01 inch 1920 by 1080 AMOLED display. It does say AMOLED in the listing, and I can can confirm it is AMOLED. We do have dual rear cameras on both back and front, but the megapixel count's a bit weird, and it says a 5 megapixel ultra wide on the back camera, but I don't think that's the case, so just take these specs with a grain of salt at the moment. The battery says 4,700 milliamp hours, even though it said 4,600 beforehand. We've got 18 watt fast charging and Type C charging. The size of the phone is 165.3 by 75.3 by 10.4 millimeters, so it is a bit of a chunky device. We've got a 120 decibel loudspeaker. The microphone is a double silicon wheat noise reduction mic and you'll see during the unboxing that I find my double silicon wheat things 
and don't know what they are. Other features, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, video automatic tracking and scaling, video anti-shake, video dynamic de-pasting, remote control and microphone integrated, app customized sound effect. And oh boy, I have a lot to demonstrate with this phone with uh, the whole streaming features. And then we've got a whole bunch of sensors as well. Gravity sensor, light sensor, distance sensor, fingerprint sensor, gyroscope, electronic compass, hall sensor, and a back fingerprint sensor. A back fingerprint sensor? I'm sorry, but what? And just quickly, I'll show the other spec sheet that's also in the listing, which pretty much everything we already know about this phone it's a live broadcast mobile phone, camera phone, plastic body, the shape, okay. It's 226 grams, feels lighter than that to be honest. Snapdragon 625, octa-core, 4 gig of LPDDR4X. Once again, it just says Android, but we know it's Android 8.1. Six inch, full HD AMOLED panel with 367 PPI with an 80% screen to body ratio. Then the cameras, we'll talk about them later. 4G with some of the Chinese networks displayed there, so don't pay attention to them. I've tried it on Telstra and Optus and it works fine. And pretty much all of the sensors and battery that we've already seen. So for the pictures in the listing, we have this. The rear dual camera can capture beauty picture. That's fantastic. That's all it shows. Then you have the scenery is beautiful and needs excellent equipment to shoot. And the picture's very low quality, so it looks like they've just got a stock image off Google and then just slapped some text on it and called it a day. But accordingly, this is excellent equipment. It's also a cell phone and it's a sound card with many sound, smart beauty, wireless remote control, and a key to live. <laughs> I forgot that's it. A key to live. Ah, yes. Yes, phone. I know it's meant to be a key to live, but it is a bit funnier looking at it going, yes, this phone is a key to live. But uh, as you can see, she is broadcasting on some place and holding the microphone remote control thing and that's exactly what I'm going to be looking like when I do my live stream with this. With the latest video algorithms, get you hot. <laughs> With video stabilization, auto tracking zoom, and dynamic HD, and everyone's just sort of jumping in the air going, yay, it's, it's a good phone. Look, I've done the camera test already, and I can say it's not a bad camera. It's pretty good for what it is. But um, get you hot, don't ask questions. Multi-scene use, easy to deal with, entertainment shopping, limit movement, bar stage, friends, game application, and video shooting. Yeah, I can't think of anything funny to say about this advertising, so let's move on. Rear HD dual photography, record your beauty. Camera uses Sony full HD optical sensor with the megapixel count being correct now for the rear camera, 13 megapixel plus 13 megapixel. And then the front camera is 16 megapixel plus five megapixel. But once again, it says it's ultra wide. I don't think that's the case. We'll get to that later in the video. High strength endurance supports quick charge 3.0 fast charge, 4,600 milliamp hour battery, 18 watt quick charge, type C interface and on the go reverse charge. I can say the battery at this point in time is not really high strength endurance. Finally, we have all system standard microphone live selfie without pressure, wireless microphone, remote control, custom sound effects in one hand. You have the microphone at the top, the sound area, and the multifunctional area. At first, when I looked at the remote, I went, that is pretty confusing. But after stuffing around with it for about five minutes, I worked it out fairly quickly. Okay, that's everything in the listing that I wanted to take a look at. There were some funny things in the listing, but it wasn't super hilarious like some of the welcome listings I've had a look at. So anyways, with that out of the way, let's now unbox the streaming phone and take a look at this thing and see what it can do, apart from obviously working as a phone. All right, taking about five days from China to Australia, I have this $180 streaming phone in front of me, packed with a lot of tape. Let's just crack this open and take a look at this thing. I didn't see any other option other than to just open it like that. It worked out in the end, it's fine. But here is the Huibo. I mean, the box looks high quality so far. And then it has something, something, and something just there. Don't know what that says. And then at the back, we have a QR code and it's Hibom. Okay, fair enough then. Bunch of dates just there as well. Recycle. Here we go. At the top of the box, TDLTE HB01. That's right. It's the Huibo HB01 with both IMEIs there. Feel free to look them up and see if they correspond with this device. Uh, we do have 2018 written there, which I believe for the specs of this device, I think 2018 is about correct. Let's open this thing up. Take a look at... Oh... Oh, the first phone for internet broadcast in the world. I mean, they're not wrong, are they? You can stream with any mobile device. Yes, I know. But this has an actual remote with it. How cool is that? So we have... What the... Okay, it doesn't come out. Oh. What the... Okay, now it comes out. We have the device just here. Now, it does look like it has some heft to it. 
but it's actually very lightweight. The remote charges via type C. Oh, that's cool. And we get our own little Simijack tool as well that has the HB branding in it. And then we have A and B. Oh, uh, what's in here then? Probably a charging cable, most likely. Oh, we have how to work instructions. Oh, 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 what are, the, what, are, what, are, what are you? Okay. Why do I get three of them? What are they used for? Then we have a warranty guide, instructions. Do I get English instructions? No, I don't get English instructions, do I? Looks like I'm gonna have to use the Google Translates to work this thing or else I'm gonna be pressing buttons. Problem is as well, this is a streaming phone. So obviously I need to stream with this. Small problem, I don't wanna log into my Google account onto this uh, to stream with. I'll have to figure out how I work that. Do you need a cable to connect the remote up or does the remote just work wirelessly? Okay. And then inside of here we do get, Aha, a couple of dongles. Type-C cable, then we get a charger, which is just a US one, but it does support 18 watt fast charging, I believe. And that's got a bit of heft to it as well, just a Type-A input. Then we have this, which possibly is the adapter for the remote, most likely. Aha, that's nifty. It doesn't have a headphone jack, obviously, but they include a dongle to give you headphones, as well as to charge and then have USB headphones if you want to. This company beats any top brand at the moment. That's an automatic winner. And you actually get earphones with this too. I mean, if you're gonna be doing streaming, you probably want some good old ugh, AirPod knockoffs. But they're type C, so I guess we can give them a go and you know, see if they do anything to have a button. Oh, they've even got the ripping off Apple there. I'm still trying to work out what these little doohickeys do, but alrighty. Let me take a look at the remote first. So there it is. Uh, oh, it's little replacements for the microphone then. Well, that solves that one then. Uh, so if I hold this button, does it power on? No. So this is entirely made of plastic, but we'll tear this down once I'm finished with it. Obviously it needs to charge. It's probably been dead for a long time, so I'll have to let that charge. But the phone itself, all the IMEIs on the back there, for streamers by streamers. I gotta remind everyone, it's a $180 phone by a brand name that I've never heard of before. And as far as I know, this is the first and only streaming phone. around this device, it kind of looks like a Razer phone. Here's the Razer phone one. Does it kind of look the same? I'm gonna lean towards this being a Razer phone one kind of inspired design. I mean, we do have an actual camera bump on this, but it's kind of reminiscent of the Razer phone one. Now at the front of the device, we have a 13 megapixel front camera, as well as a 12 megapixel depth sensor. As far as I can tell, it is a depth sensor and nothing more. I thought it was an ultra wide camera at first, but it doesn't appear to be, but I could be incorrect at this point in time. We've got an earpiece, front LED, as well as a proximity and light sensor. Then the screen itself, which is a 6.01 inch display. It does have a look of a 2018 device. We do have some bezels going on, but you know, to be expected, of course. The entire thing's made of plastic. We've got our SIM tray just there. At the bottom, we have the dual stereo speakers, as well as a USB type C port. On the other side, we've got our power button, which also doubles as a fingerprint sensor and the volume rocker just there. At the top of the device, it is just rounded off. So for the rear cameras, we have a 16 megapixel main camera and supposedly a five megapixel ultra wide camera, but that doesn't look ultra wide to me. Then we also have an LED flash, a hole for a secondary microphone and the live stabilization and live auto zoom embedded. Then that should be an LED flash or an RGB just there and then HB for streamers by streamers. Popping out the SIM tray, we've got support for dual nano SIMs or a micro SD and one nano SIM. So I will populate that with spooky scary Halloween and Telstra SIM. Hopefully this has some juice. So let's power this thing on. Ooh, for streamers by streamers. What version of Android is this running? I don't remember. It sounded all serious and then bang. <laughs> oh, good. Got 4G there. Okay, we're in. Let me just put the brightness all the way up real quickly. Those colors are super sharp because this is an AMOLED display. And if we have a look close up, that is really, really nice. 
and there's a live stream widget as well. So I'll swipe down first. I'll just chuck the brightness down ever so slightly. So we've got Wi-Fi, mobile data, and Surface Line. Okay, so that's the front. So that's a front LED. Makes sense. Surface Line. I should have put two and two together. Torch. Yeah, that's fairly bright for what it is, anyways. Also, there was no setup. That's okay. And then you have Live. Oh, that's RGB. Look at it go. That's nifty. This is to indicate that you're live. So if you then switch this off, that doesn't come on. So if you are doing a live stream and you're, you know, holding it like this and you see the LEDs going around, that's how you know that you're live. That's really cool. You freck. You, f you freak. You freak? You freck. Let's go with you freck. Um, that's probably connecting the remote. Looks like it anyways. Do not disturb, auto rotate, battery saver, Bluetooth, airplay mode, and location. On the main screen, yeah, the little live stream widget, live assistant, sound manager, HB store, lamp effect, music gallery, calendar, sound recorder, contacts, file manager, clock settings, phone messages, browser, I'd say, camera, then email, calculator, sim toolkit, play store, scroll, doodad, UC, something, Amazon, Google, and Bego Live. That's all of the default apps on this. Fairly stock for the most part. Part. If I touch and hold on the main screen, we have a whole bunch of widgets, wallpapers, we have brown looking thing, pink looking thing. Oh, stolen off iPhone. Yeah, stolen off iPhone. Also stolen off iPhone. Uh, maybe stolen off iPhone? I don't think that's stolen off iPhone. That looks like it's original, maybe? Not too sure. Let's just set it to something with some vibrant colors real quickly. I'll just let the display speak for itself. This is impressive. For a cheapo device, that's very, very impressive. But I feel like I should put it as iPhone screen. <laughs> Effects, you can have the little, you know, thing to whatever you want. You can have it to multiple. What? What is, ooh. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, flippity flip. Wee. Yeah, this is fun. I'm having fun with this. Layouts, uh, grids and stuff, and themes. Oh, you have, oh, hello. Ah, so now it's not a live streaming phone now because it's taken away that sort of futuristic look. Then if I go to, oh, hello, then I can change it to pink, happiness. No, a little love heart, that's cute. I'll change it back to streaming mode with an iPhone wallpaper. Oh, what do these do? Oh, there's live wallpapers? No, there's not. Actually, I'll set it as this one. So far, just playing around with this thing, I already like it as it is. I think it's really cool. This is a smalls review, so I've got to go very, very in-depth with this thing. So I'll jump straight into settings. This is running Android 8.1. I was not expecting that. I thought it may have been running Android 10 or something. That's not the case. Let's quickly go through settings then. So network and internet, Wi-Fi. Let's quickly see if we've got 2.4 and 5 gigahertz. Perfect. Standard Gboard there as well. Mobile network is Telstra, SIM cards, mobile plan. I was going to say eSIM there, but no, that's not the case. Let me give this a quick call then. What's the default ringtone of our streaming phone? Flutie phone. And the notification, well, the little RGB strip at the back goes off. With my brief testing, I can tell you that's very loud, so I'll splice in the call quality for you all, and you can hear how this sounds. Testing the earpiece quality of the Huibo HB01 streaming phone. This is what it sounds like with Telstra. I've tried two SIM cards. I've got Optus and Telstra in it at the moment, and both run at 4G. However, there's no VOLTE. Fairly basic, but you know what, from the quick test that I did do beforehand, it did sound quite loud, and from what you're hearing now, it sounds pretty good. Any interferences due to my Blue Yeti picking up basically anything, you might also be able to hear me talk as well, um, even though I've closed all doors and stuff. Anyways, let's move on to the microphone quality. And microphone quality on the streaming phone sounds a little something like this, and from my quick test as well, sounded pretty good. However, I have noticed some issues during the camera test with the microphones, which I'll talk about later, but for now, the microphone during phone calls sounds really good. It is quite clear for what it is, so no complaints here. Let's move on. Yeah, no bah! The speaker's loud on this too. Okay, you've just heard the call quality from this thing. The quality wasn't that great while I was recording it, but when I've tried it in person, it sounds much better. The earpiece is nice and loud and the microphone's quite clear. So I honestly don't have any issues with it. It's probably just my Blue Yeti microphone picking up all the interference and stuff, but can confirm that we do have dual 4G as I've put Optus and Telstra in this and both of them work at 4G. Even though it doesn't say 4G at the top, it definitely is working. However, there's no VOLTE and I've also looked through settings and nothing there for it. Let's continue on. 
connected devices, Bluetooth. Uh, we don't have NFC, but we do have driving mode twice. Have I broken it? Did I break it? No, okay, we're fine. Oh, now Chromebook's there. Tell you what, we'll just leave that. Apps and notifications. Let's scroll through the system apps and see if there's anything that I'll need to open up with Quick Shortcut Maker later in the video. Artisan's Launcher. Everything is looking standard so far. Qualcomm, yep, we know it's Snapdragon. If I'm quiet for this, it's because I'm just looking at everything. Crypto service. Hmm. Do you think it might? Yeah, I do not feel one bit safe putting my actual Google credentials on this device. I do not feel safe with doing that. So I'm going to have to think outside the box with this one. Perf dump. Fair enough. <laughs> uh, QMMI, that's there as well. That's on couple of the other Snapdragon devices that I've recently looked at. Talkbacks there as well. Test web view, wireless update, and work profile setup. Lamp effect. Ooh, lights will flicker with the music. Live atmosphere lamp, switch gear. When switch, play the rainbow. Play the green breath lamp effect when standby. Play the laser wave effect until the call is connected. Does it have a notification LED at the front? Curious. No, but that is your notification LED. That's fine with me. Yeah, and you can just preview it. I've got to say, it is pretty nifty. Remote control pairing. Click the OK button to start the remote control pairing. If pairing, the last pairing information will be clear. Continue pairing. Yes, pairing. I have a feeling this is dead, so we'll probably need to charge this. I've had to film this bit again because I was confused at first when I started playing around with this, but I've worked it all out and I'll show you how it works. With this fully charged up, power it on. Wait for it to turn red. Then you go start pairing. Then go OK. And then fast, short press, remote control, turn key three times into pairing mode. So one, two, three. Then it does that. Then you press it and it's paired. Done. Now you'll see at the top, we do have the remote control icon as well as a live camera icon. The U-Freak or U-Freak, I still haven't worked out what that is. Probably something to do with the remote, but I'll just have it on anyways. But this live mode, you can change the microphone and reverb settings. Now you're probably thinking in the camera test, I use the microphone to record audio. Not the case. With the stock camera app, I cannot use this microphone to record audio. It's just the built-in microphones, which are very, very iffy. The bottom one works, but the one at the top next to the camera is is really iffy and you can see the RGB having a party there to let you know that you're live. If you use open camera and choose external microphone, you can then use this to record audio with this. But you have to make sure that you go into this setting and choose live to enable it all. And then once you've enabled that, then you can press this to have a scene mode, which I'll demonstrate all in the live streaming. Reverb settings, service brightness, a company volume for being able to hear yourself while streaming, and the microphone volume. Once you go out of that, you then have another mode, which is sound effects and they're assigned to these six buttons. But if you go back to Sound Manager, this is where you can actually reassign these to these keys if you wanted to. Stick around, because you'll get to hear these absolutely wonderful sound effects when I do the live stream test. But that's pretty much all there is to the remote. There's no other functionality that this does. It's just a matter of controlling the scenes and then playing some sound effects and a microphone. That's all it does. Most of the stuff you're still going to be controlling with the phone, but you just have some shortcuts with this. Battery, we have 6 hours and 24 minutes left with a 4,600 milliamp hour battery in this that has likely degraded over time. I don't expect this to perform quite well, but I will do a battery test with this just to see how it goes and I'll splice in how the battery lasted and also the charging speed as well. Let me talk about the battery life with the Huibo HB01. So I got a total of 41 hours standby from 100% down to 35%. Now for a 4,600 milliamp hour battery, that's not really the best, but I can assume that the battery in this has degraded over time since it's from 2018. It does say we have 21 hours, 41 minutes left. I charged this completely up. I was doing the camera test for about 45 minutes or so, and the phone dropped from 100% down to 65%. Battery wise with this, it's not really holding up as well as I thought. Then as for the charging, I let this thing completely die and from completely dead to 100%, took about three hours and 20 minutes or so, which it says it offers 18 watt fast charging. And we have a way of checking that with my Shargeek power bank. Let me just plug this in and we can see on the screen if it actually does 18 watts or not. There we go, it's climbing steadily. So at the moment it's only doing 10 watts. 
with 5 volt at 1.84 amps. Look, I'd say that this would have 18 watt fast charging. It's just that the phone is at 86%, so it probably doesn't need that full 18 watts. But I just thought I'd quickly demonstrate it anyways. And I guess when I'll tear this apart, I'll get to have a look at the battery and see if it's 4,600 milliamp hours or 4,700 milliamp hours, whatever it may be. When we get to live streaming, that's when you're going to see the battery life go. In display, we've got the brightness level, eye protection mode, adaptive brightness, wallpaper, we've already been through, advanced, uh, don't have much there, ambient display, wake stream and you receive notifications. Sounds, we have flutey phone as the default ringtone in advanced. We have nothing much there. Vibrate or tap, yes. Charging sounds, I guess. Screen locking sounds as well. Dial pad tones, I guess we'll have them on. Storage, we have 64 gigabytes of internal storage, which was as advertised, and my 64 gig micro SD card there as well. Security and location. So obviously we have fingerprint, but can we do face unlock? Probably not. So I'll go ahead and enroll my fingerprint. We'll do a safe pin of one, two, three, four. And just with my little bit of real estate on my signature thumbs. Let's see, yeah, okie dokie. Done, fairly easy. Nice and fast, can't complain with that. Not much else within security. We have instructions, test web view, mobile instructions. Fantastic, that's good, that's helpful. And I suppose the remote controller instructions all in Chinese. I'm gonna to have to use Google Translate to work my way through this. And then we have accounts, which is in lowercase. What is, oh, okay. I'm not gonna add my Google account just yet. I'm gonna just hold off from that for a second. After some hesitation, I did put my burner Gmail on this thing because I wasn't too sure how I was gonna stream from this because I didn't wanna actually put my main YouTube channel on this device to be able to do a live stream. So what I've done is put my burner Gmail on this so then I could download Twitch off the Play Store, stream with Twitch, and then use OBS to broadcast the feed from Twitch to there. It will all make sense once you see it. And also the crypto servers that was in applications, supposedly nothing to worry about. It's just a thing in Android. I thought it was like a Bitcoin miner or something like that in this, but no, it's not. Accessibility, we have TalkBack. Downloaded services, the UC Squirrel thing, switch access and all that sort of thing. So if you do need a screen reader or something like that, you do have the services here. Google services and preferences, don't need to go into, but system, languages and import, nothing really to check there. Gestures, no navigation gestures or anything, you're stuck with buttons, date and time, system update, let's just curiosity. <laughs> Android security update, 5th of August, 2018. That's uh, almost five years out of date there. Finally, in about phone, we have the wireless update. It's the Hebom, not the Huibo, but we'll just see if no, we don't have anything. In status, we have the serial number there, which I think matches with the box. It does, it matches with the box. Because this is not a welcome device. Security patch level, yeah, 5th of August, 2018. Baseband, kernel version, and the build number. Let's enable developer options and enable my really safe pin right there. Also, Easter egg, because why not? There's Oreo there, and we'll just watch him go. Ooh, wait for him to kick in, wait for him to kick in, wait for him to kick in, there we go. Looking good. I'll put the animation scales down to 0.5, just so then it feels a little bit snappier. Memory, we do have the four gig with 2.4 gig free, and that's basically everything in settings. Where do we go from here? The live part is gonna take up a very big portion of this video. Let's just double check it. So it's just broadcast info. So it just keeps track of what you broadcast. So once I start live streaming with this, then that'll all work. Sound manager, we'll come back to this. HB store, which is the store for this device. And it says an error, I think. This store has probably long shut down, most likely. I would say that is the case. You could make an account, possibly. Either the servers have shut down for this, or it does work, but you just have to create an account. Lamp effect, we've already been to. We're gonna be doing this completely out of order, so I guess we just do the speaker test. Um, what is it doing? Here is a first. Let's just say I want to play BFG Division. Oh, Party Shuffle. Was that what it is? I can't play anything. This music player is broken. <laughs> it's broken. Calendar is a Chinese calendar. So that's a custom calendar, not a Google calendar. Sound recorder looks a little something like this. Voice quality. 
high and low. Contacts, file manager. Let's see if I can actually play BFG Division through file manager. Oh, that's a very weird looking file manager. The player doesn't support, it can't play MP3s. The player doesn't support this type of audio file. Then what music do you play, my friend? That is why it can't play music because it doesn't support MP3. What? If you're still confused as to why the music player can't play MP3 files, I'm still with you because even stuff that I've recorded on this phone just doesn't play. There's just nothing, not lyrics. <laughs> So I've got YouTube music on here and we'll be able to do the speaker test. Bro, what are you doing? Even with YouTube music, it still can't play an MP3 file. What is it loading? What is it trying to find? I've turned Wi-Fi off. I'll turn mobile data off too. Let's just get a random music player off the Play Store and just see if it works. Can't play MP3 files via the stock app. Can't play MP3 files via YouTube music. Can we play them through this? And I've made sure all the live settings are off and stuff just in case. And that doesn't make a difference. The remote control's not paired. So there's no reason why we can't play BFG Division. That's fantastic. That's good. That thing's installed on the phone. Can I skip now? Please, thank you. Let me skip. Okay. Alrighty, this looks fantastic. Looks like YouTube music. Just reskinned. Alright, let's see if it actually plays. Hey! Finally, we got it. We got there in the end. Time for the speaker test with BFG Division. I have had phones that can't play MP3 files, but an Android phone out of the box that can't play MP3 files, that just goes over my head. Anyways, let's see how this sounds. There's only one speaker in this. I thought there was two. I would have been led to assume that there was dual speakers in there. I mean, the advertising did say one 120 decibel speaker, which can we really trust this thing? Uh, isn't quite accurate. Let's just say it's not accurate. It doesn't sound the best with BF Division. Fifty percent's fine. But bumping all the way up does get a little bit lost. With an actual proper song, the speaker quality actually doesn't sound too bad at all. It's just BFG Division being a very noisy track. But I'm just used to the way it sounds with most speakers. The question is, how do the earphones sound in this? Well, let's plug them in. There we go. Oh, did that just break? <laughs> that didn't sound good at all. They're a bit low quality. The middle button doesn't play? I thought the middle button would have played. Okay. Can I control the volume? Nope. The buttons don't seem to work, unfortunately. Actually, I've just noticed something with the earphones. They're a little bit broken because when I was playing the track and I just moved this ever so slightly, the sound would cut off. So I have a feeling that these might not be of any use to me. But that's why we have... Get this out of the way. This fella. So this fella goes into their like... Why doesn't it... I... It doesn't feel like it's gonna fit. There we go. So now we have the power of dongle. Let's just charge it up. And sure enough, it's charging. So then now, if I was to get some proper headphones and then plug them in... Oh God, what the fuck? Well, that clearly doesn't work. I just get crackling with it. Well, let me try type C. Yeah, type C works. So what if I was to now plug this in as well? They're ever so slightly playing through my headphones, but all the audio is coming out from the earphones. So the dongle is a little bit confusing. It half works. The type C ports work, but the 3.5 mil jack doesn't work. So there goes the whole point of live streaming and using my own earphones. I'm gonna have to use these cheapo ones. Well, I guess that's the whole experience, isn't it? Oh yeah, see the app is installed on this phone. Bigo live. Well, check you sometime soon. Well, there you go. That's how the speaker performs on this. Once I tear this down, I'll get a better look at the speakers, but definitely no dual loudspeakers or anything going on. It's just that bottom one doing its thing and that's it. I just uninstalled the music player apps and I just found that if you touch and hold on the apps, you get all of the little shortcuts there as well. I thought they introduced this on Android 9 and not 8.1. I am most likely mistaken. Clock, uh, I guess allow. Yep. 
is a standard clock there. And then you can do a couple of things with them. Clock, timer, stopwatch. Also, because I can't dump the system files, I'll just quickly check the ringtones. Phone ringtone. I don't think there's anything that is custom on this. I think these are all standard ones. They should be anyways. I think it's those uh, files in the sound manager that we should really play around with. Because I need to stop filming and test this device and play around with it, I'll go ahead and just open up the camera. Fast autofocus. We have a lot of options in here. We have a time-lapse mode. We have slow motion with audio. I can finally do slow motion with audio. I haven't been able to do slow motion with audio, but look how laggy it is. Good stuff. Video, photo, beauty, square, bokeh, night, and panorama. Healthy set of options in here. So for photos, we have a pro mode there, some filters if you want to do that, a timer, HDR is auto, flash you can have on, off or auto as well. And in settings, we have the shutter sound, time watermark, touch hold shutter, the resolution being 13 megapixels. Pay attention to the resolutions as well in here because they're all over the place, but I'll investigate that later on. Picture quality, we'll set it to high, GPS location, save to SD card, and that's about it for photos. So I'd say that's a depth sensor on the back there. Video wise for the rear camera, it records in 4K. I might have to try open camera and see if I can get um 60 FPS out of this thing. Stabilization as well. Oh, I don't know if that's OIS or not. Nah, it's EIS. Amazing to see that it actually has 4K. There you go. What is auto zoom? I don't know what auto zoom does. Can confirm the auto zoom does work. At first I thought it didn't work, but after playing around with this, it in fact does work. Now we flip to the front camera. So we have photo mode. Looks like it is just a depth sensor, but what can I do on the front camera? I can do full HD, 1080p with stabilization as well. You also can have the assistive grid on and photo wise, 16 megapixels on the front camera as well. Also, we do have a pro mode on the front camera which is kind of unique. The torch on the front camera, soft light, off, low, medium, or height. I say that in the camera test, but I'll just show you now, height. Well, I've got a lot of photos and videos to take with this thing, so I'll stop filming, do the battery test, charging test, uh, fiddle around with all the settings and stuff, and we'll come back and actually start properly taking a look at the features of this thing. Enjoy the photos and videos, and we'll be right back.
Okay, this is what 4K video looks like on the Huibo streaming phone. I've forgotten the model name of it, it's been so long. This is 4K, um, no stabilization, the stabilization turns off when you go to this mode. But let me say, it looks vibrant. It looks really, really good. We do have autofocus and manual focus as well. But that's pretty good. I mean, playing it back is gonna be a little bit different, obviously. But from what I'm seeing now, that's pretty good. That's not bad at all. I don't think the camera would be able to do 60 FPS. I'm not too sure about that. Um, I'll try open camera and see if anything happens, but just as a showcase, that's really, really good. I'm quite surprised at that. I guess this could be the main camera test and I'll just do 1080p as just sort of the secondary one. Does that make sense? No, it doesn't. That's okay. Yeah, oh, good. It's like on the verge of pouring down any moment now. So that's why I want to get camera test done as soon and quickly as possible. I'm too tired to eat in English today. Uh, but lemons, look, that is a lemon. That is also a lemon. You can see the focus kicking in at 4K. Did the Unihertz Luna do 4K? <laughs> I don't think it did, uh, but looking good. Looking really, really good. Can we zoom 4K? Yes, we can. That's eight times digital zoom with this. Wow. Not bad at all. You're looking pretty good on the back, so let's keep going with other modes and see what we get. Okay, this is 1080p with stabilization on. And I can see it working. I'm moving the phone around and it's it's definitely stabilized. That looks like OIS to me. That doesn't look like EIS. Look at this. That's me moving the phone. In several directions. I think it's got OIS. I'm fairly sure it does. This might be the first phone that actually has OIS. I won't get too excited just yet, but yeah, this is looking really, really good. This is a good camera. I'm just looking at that. Look how nice it looks. Look at this. Wow. Not bad at all. No, it's not bad. It's fantastic. I mean, for the money, you know, you'd expect it to be pretty damn good, but uh, oh man. I'm, I'm stoked at this quality, actually. Now the camera test is going to go for like 10 minutes. That's okay. The whole point of this phone was to really showcase the cameras, wasn't it? So I guess I'm not wrong in doing this. But I think you get the idea. It's good. It's really, really good. Too bad I can't do like portrait video, but eh. This gets an acceptable pass from me, that's for sure. Pretty good. I literally just recorded for like half an hour out there and the sun wasn't out and now the sun's out. Look at the stupid Melbourne weather. Yeah. That is terrible, isn't it? Yes. I do agree. Yeah, you pink now, you know, boop, you know, boop. <laughs> oh, adorable. I found a lizard. Look at him. Yo, hey buddy. Let's let's go see him. Oh, hey buddy. Hey buddy. Hey. Hey, you're a little fella. Hey, you're a buddy. Hey, you're a... Hey, you're a... It's alright. No. You're okay. You're alright. You gonna hide there? Ripley ate your friend, by the way. Many months ago. Or actually, probably a year ago. Okay, testing video quality at nighttime with the Huibo streaming phone. It's HB01. That's the model name. Small problem. I've noticed that the microphones on this, it's only recording from the top one. So if I start talking from the left side, you should be able to hear this, but down here, there's nothing going on as far as I can tell, because the footage that I've played back, there's just no audio in the right channel. Not sure, no idea why. Camera wise already for this phone, I'm still very happy with it. The LED is quite bright and does make for decent videos at nighttime. 
with autofocus and manual focus as well. Looking good. But you can't really see too much in front of me though. It's only when you get pretty close to an object, that's when you can start to see the details. But, you know, it's not bad. Oh, he's looking a little, uh, a little blurry. There you go. It's about as best as you're going to get. Yeah, hello. Oh, oh, look, 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 oh, oh, oh. Yeah. We're playing with auto zoom. This is going to make filming so much better. Is it not? How did you get my off-white zip tie? It's fake. Well, okay, so auto zoom does work. Oh, 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 oh. It's just like auto detecting anything. What the fuck? Okay. I was gonna say it's auto detecting any time Ripley moves, but it's just like, yeah, I'll detect whatever I want. We definitely know it's got stabilization, but it feels like OIS. Even though I said EIS at the start, I think it's OIS. Because, dude, that's pretty good. I mean, I'm in dark environment, so. Yeah. Do you want to be an off white cat? Remember, I used to do stuff like that. I used to review fake off white stuff. Back when I was called s'mores and stuff. Alrighty. Oh, we do have something going on here. This is the Weibo. Already forgot the name, but um, thing streaming phone with the front camera with stabilization on, and this is 1080p. Um, I just realised that the camera should be that away. EIS. I'm leaning towards. Oh, no, it wouldn't be OIS. I don't know if the back camera is OIS or not, but the front camera wouldn't be EIS for sure. But hey, it looks pretty good. Can't say anything bad about it to be honest. It's, uh, I mean, I look dead. That's perfectly fine. Although it's a little dead. Um, yeah, you know what? That's pretty good. Ah, uh, okay, hello. Not bad. Camera so far, performance of the cameras are pretty damn good. Thumbs up to that. Look at this! Hello? How you doing? I have a pair of eyeballs in a mouth. Something that I just found as well that I haven't shown during the camera settings, but the front LED has three settings, low, medium, and height, which is fair, you know, gotta call it something. Uh, this is what it looks like. The photos didn't turn out too bad for the night shots, let me say that, but um, the LED is pretty bright on the front as well, and does work. Of course it works. Um, anything else to really say though? I mean, if you're doing streaming in the middle of the night, we're gonna see your face, so that's not an issue, but there's no autofocus or anything like that, it's just fixed, but you can just... How's it going? Good. Mm. Yes. Front camera? Pretty good for what it is. It'll do. This was, what, 170 Australian dollars? Not half bad. It's okay. It'll do. It's good. I think. I'm rambling at these tests nowadays, sorry. Alrighty, you've just seen the photos and videos that I took with our good old friend, the Huibo HB01 streaming phone. What do you think of the pictures on this? I thought they're pretty damn good. 13 megapixel rear camera, and let me just bring up the three Muppets just for example. Auto HDR was on for all of these photos, and I can say they turned out really good. That rear camera definitely does something, and I know I said it may have optical image stabilization, but looking back at the footage, it seems more like electric image stabilization but I can't be too sure unless we tear it down and even zooming right in you get the detail I mean it's not the absolute clearest of cameras it definitely captures the detail with HDR and I'm pretty happy with it as for the secondary camera on the back if you take a photo with the bokeh effect on you can change the focus in here so if I do this you can see the background is getting blurred so I'm led to believe that is definitely a depth sensor on the back and the flowers for example as well and if I just 
do that. You can see that it is blurring the background. It's not the most accurate depth sensor, but it's doing something. However, with depth sensors and macro sensors that I've already said before, if you just take a photo with the main sensor, you get basically the exact same result. So the depth sensor does something, but I'd honestly just stick with the main camera. The main camera is more than enough as it is. Video wise as well, it can do 4K at 30 FPS and the video quality was actually very, very good for this. Pleasantly surprised. However, the microphone quality with this is pretty lackluster. Screaming into the bottom microphone does work, but it's this one up the top next to the cameras that just doesn't quite pick up sound. And as I've already said earlier with the whole remote control thing, you can't use the stock camera app to record audio from this microphone. You have to use open camera in order to do that. Unless there's something I'm missing, but that's just for my testing anyways. Also, slow motion video doesn't capture audio, even though it says that it does. It didn't, which was sad because I would have had a lot of fun with that. Rear camera quality, altogether, not too bad. The front camera quality doesn't look too bad at all. No autofocus and no manual focus. It is just fixed, but it does pick up the details on my face pretty well. It's a little bit blurry in some areas. Doing the bokeh effect with the front camera, as you can see, the background is blurred out. You can see my mug there, but I can't change the aperture size or anything. It is just fixed. So I'm not entirely sure with the front cameras. It's probably better if I take it apart and have a look at it all. And then video on the front camera as well. I can't say nothing too bad about that as well. 1080p, 30 FPS. It is just the microphone quality lets this down. But if you're willing to use open camera, which might be a better solution if you were to purchase this phone, you can absolutely use this and off you go. But this gimmick with the remote, the phone that you have in your pocket right now is more than capable of doing live streaming. You wouldn't need to use a microphone. It's just more the shortcut functionality of it. That's the more gimmicky part of it because you can change your voice and stuff like that. Still, they could have put some decent microphones on this, but we'll have a look at them once I tear it down. But anyways, enough of me rambling about the cameras. Let's move on because now I'm gonna show you live streaming with this device. So I haven't done it as of yet, but I'll splice in the footage for you all and you can just take it all in. But the live assistant will come back to after I've done the stream and we'll see what that says. The sound manager I'll be demonstrating and all of the features I'll be demonstrating on this. I'll see you all in the live stream with this device and we'll talk about how it performed when we come back. So in this little shortcut menu here, I have microphone options, which I've got the microphone at 50%. Then I've got the accompany volume at 80%. Trust me, you'll want to prepare yourselves for that. Uh, the surface brightness is the LED. I can control that, but don't worry about that. Um, I'm going to keep the reverb off. And then the scene mode is going to make me sound a little something like this. Hello. Well, this is certainly a very, very, very wide space. Amazing. It's like we're in a museum or a big hall or something. Wow, who would have thought that such a thing from AliExpress could do such wondrous things? Ladies and gentlemen, um, I would like to present this prestigious award to the man on my right here. Uh, so that's KTV, so specialty sounds basically the same. Specialty doesn't really change anything. It makes the reverb go down ever so slightly. Oh, I can do Indian text gamma voice as well. You know, you need to do each and everything, right? So go onto your keyboard, right? The Windows keyboard and press the letter R, R is in Romeo, right? Um, yeah, I also sound like Jesus as well, you know? Hallelujah. So the pop filter does not work at all. Well, everybody, this is the time of war stories with Tom Anderson. Hello, everybody. My name is Tom Anderson, and I live next to Budhead and Beavis. I don't know. Then we have MC. In the ring tonight, on our left side, we have Michael the Great, six foot three, ready to battle. And on the left, we have Bob the Builder. Five foot two, I don't fucking know. I'm about 75 years old, and I do this YouTube thing, and I get many people along the world sit back and watch me do stupid things. And I appreciate that. And as, as an American, I appreciate everything that you do for me. It's, it's wonderful. 
It is wonderful, and I, and I cannot express my gratitude enough for everybody, everybody who is watching, everybody who is in this mausoleum right now uh, that is uh, hearing me speak. I hope that you all uh, are enjoying this. I hope you're all having fun, uh, and I hope you're all, uh, I don't know. <laughs> then we go to Dodge. Dodge is this sound effect which does nothing but it's just another reverb, uh, a minimal reverb. So now it's more just a, um, wow, don't I sound like I'm in a uh, small room with a bit of an echo. This is what my soul would sound like, just quiet, emptiness. Just These ones aren't really that fun. It's the next one. Okay. Hello, everyone. Oh, boy. Oh, Jesus fucking Christ. This is something that I just, um, well, uh, hello. Hello, everybody. This is the doll tune. Oh, Jesus fuck. Um, it sounds so horrific. You know, it's just like, oh, my God. <laughs> Once again, it's another fucking reverb one. Listen, there's a um, auto tune. There's an auto tune going on. Hello. Whoa. Oh. Yeah. Singing from my lounge room. Doing nothing. I love to give I love me. I love to say anything I love. Hello. <laughs> do you believe in love after love? Do, do, do. I can feel something inside of me. I, I don't really remember the lyrics of the fucking song. We're no strangers to love. You know the rules, and so do I. I just want to tell you what I'm feeling Gotta make you understand Never gonna give you up Never gonna let you down Never gonna turn around and Deserve that you Never gonna make you cry Never gonna say goodbye Hello everybody, this is uh, Peter Griffin Reporting from the century of Auto-Tune Central Yeah, da 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 See, I'm a SoundCloud rubber now <laughs> <laughs> For the people who are still alive And when you're dead I'll be still alive Still alive Still alive Yeah boy Thank you, appreciate that. Uh, another round of applause, everyone. Thank you very much for that. Thank you. Thank you all for coming. Uh, that is called Funny Scream. The Crow D in. Okay. So, hey everybody, I just got a new welcome phone. Wow! Thanks. The next sound effect is Little Lolly Cute. All he has to do is answer this question correctly, and he wins one million dollars. We're gonna give him a countdown. 
10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And congratulations, sir. You didn't win a million dollars. Get the hell out of my office. This one's called Game Ball Demo. <laughs> this is Kiss. Oh, that's literally... Uh, cartoon sound? Now there is, uh, Naku Ruru Inn. Arigato, mama haha. It doesn't say anything else, but hit with A. Oh. Yeah, it's like Doom. Uh, the next one is Dota Legend. I'll just play these. So was applause? That was laugh? That was grin. Would you like me to play that again? No problems. Despise? That's moi. Oh, that's the slap in the face. Zhao Zhen. Oh, okay. That's funny scream. Yep. Uh, the crowd. Wow. A uh, little lolly something. Oh, yep, that thing. Say blast off. That was game counter. Game ball. No idea. Kiss is just kiss. Cartoon sound. Yep. Oh. Ruru or something. Hit with a punch. Yep. Oh, it's finished. Alrighty, you've just seen the live stream demo. I hope you all thoroughly enjoyed that. They went for a little bit longer than expected, but the full live stream where I demonstrate all the sound effects, I'll link it up here if you want to see that. That's all my shenanigans that I get up to within my live streams, so feel free to enjoy that. But yeah, it worked. And if I check the broadcast info, you can see that I was streaming for two hours and 16 minutes. Perfectly fine to live stream. Can't really do anything with the extra cameras. You're just really stuck with the main front and the main rear one, but the remote definitely does work. The microphone does clip a lot, so you have to put it down to a really, really minimal volume and then start speaking into it for it to not pick up any pops or anything like that. That double silicon wheat pop filter that's on top there uh, does absolutely nothing at all. But for the most part, it does work. It's more the question, would I be purchasing this just to use as a streaming phone? The answer is, well, kind of. 
If you wanted to, you can do some silly effects and voice changing and stuff like that, but I'm pretty sure you can just get an application on your phone to do that already, and then just speak to the microphone and it'll do that. But you can listen to yourself with the earphones, as you've seen in the live stream demo, I was able to hear myself throughout all the sound effects and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, I played all the sound effects that were in here as well. When I wanted to assign them to the remote control, it would just stop Twitch broadcasting, so I couldn't go to this and play more sound effects. I had to exit this, open it up, and that's why later on in the live stream, I was just playing the sounds from the phone. Also, DSP is out of work. I've pretty much demonstrated everything that I need to in the live settings. Without further ado, let's keep moving on. Email is just email. Calculator looks a little something like that. Sim toolkit. The SMI card has no toolkit service. Fair enough, Play Store works, already demonstrated, and I have installed Genshin Impact on this, so we will be testing that. The UC scroll guy thing, I'll just select the blue one. Did that do anything? Oh, hello. Yeah, I'm gonna have to see what this service is. I'll just click that, yes. Okay, it's probably some browser. Yeah, it's probably a Chinese browser, most likely. Can we uninstall it? No, we cannot, sad. Uh, Amazon App Store is here as well. If you wanted to use the Amazon App Store, you can. Don't know why they've installed it. The Google Apps there as well. Bego Live is probably the application you're meant to stream with on this device. But as I've already demonstrated with live streaming, Twitch is what I went with and then used OBS to broadcast that signal. It all makes sense. This is from Singapore, I think this app is. But yeah, obviously I'm not gonna... Um, I have now worked out what Bego Live is. I am going to just exit out of that like so. That was easy. Can I uninstall it? Yes, I can. Goodbye. Okay, I can't uninstall it. Well, that explains that application then. Wasn't expecting that. Oh God, this phone's an OnlyFans phone. Oh dear. No, no, no. Let's not think of that. I have installed a bunch of apps already. So I've got device info hardware, quick shortcut maker, CPU system info, San Andreas, Geekbench 5, Genshin Impact, Open Camera, and Twitch installed on this. So we'll come back to this because we have YouTube. So let's do the Costa Rica in 4K test on this nice 1920 by 1080 AMOLED panel. Um, what? A new follower just followed you. Get rid of it. Now, uninstall. Still want to uninstall. Uninstall. Please enter the reason why you uninstall Bego Live. Others, fuck off. Hooray, it's gone. Okay, let's do the YouTube test now. And then TikTok's right here. Thanks a lot, phone. All right, let's try this. Oh, I didn't do the browser test. I'll quickly do the browser test after this, but I assume that this is gonna be absolutely fine. I can actually play it at 4K 60 FPS, so let's give this a crack. With the specs in this, I don't doubt this will run bad. Wait for it. Okay. It's not 4K yet. That's 4K 60 FPS right there. No, it's not. That doesn't look 4K 60. Yeah, no, it's changed to 480p. Hang on a second. Why is it now only in 480p? YouTube is confusing me. Go for it, buddy. Do your 4K 60 FPS. There we go. Hey. There we go. Oh, bit chuggy. does sort of lag 4K 60 FPS. Let's give it the benefit of the doubt and go 1080p because that's what our display is anyways. That's 1080p 60 FPS, not a problem. That looks good. And once again, I'll praise the display on this. Very, very nice. The colors are all very accurate and it seems to be a fairly quality OLED panel. Could be the cheapest one they've put on here, but it still looks good. But it's kind of giving me an idea of performance as well. If 4K 60 FPS struggled, and I've got Genshin Impact on this, am I gonna have a bad time? Most likely. Also, during the camera test and stuff, I've noticed that the phone gets extremely warm right here. So we will have to check to see if there's any cooling inside of this. So yeah, finally, we've got the browser left, which is Chrome. So if I type in Hebom Phone, is it Hebom or Hebon? No, that's not them. So if you type in Huibo phone on Google, you have the AliExpress listings, which says it's $136. Maybe it's gone down. It has it gone down in price. I mean, it's gone down ever so slightly, but it's still $158 Australian. There is nothing for this phone. AliExpress items, we've got some company sites. I don't think anyone's actually reviewed this. I mean, Unbox Therapy in 2017, but I don't think that's it. I think I might be the first person reviewing this. 
possibly. As expected with the browser and the specifications, it's nice and fast. You'll have no issues if you do purchase this as a secondary phone. You can browse the web and social media and all that sort of stuff and you shouldn't really have an issue. Let's now test to see performance wise on this. And what I'll do is open up Geekbench 5. So we have Beijing He Bomb technology. <laughs> Why is it called HeBomb? They're probably no longer in business, most likely. Android 8.1.0, and the CPU is just ARM Qualcomm. Let's see the benchmark score, compare it to some other phones, and see what we get. Okay, so it took 11 minutes, and I only dropped 2% of battery life. But here are the scores, 179 for single, and the multi-core score is 1062. So I'll display some other scores to the side of the device. It beats the Soap phone, which had a Snapdragon 430 in it. But the performance of this is really looking close to a MediaTek Helio P22. Obviously, we get more single and multi-core scores, but I tried to find other scores from previous phones to see if there was anything close to these numbers, but I haven't really got anything. I probably do have something in comparison, but I just can't think of it at this point in time. Definitely beats a MediaTek MT. 6580 that's for sure which is good but just quickly let me just see the specs here which says android 8.1 model id being beijing he bomb technology hb01 which is probably their only phone that they've made most likely but yeah at the end of the day these are just numbers so we really want to see how performance is with games and i've got san andreas and genshin impact on here so let's start with san andreas and see how that performs on this everything's up to the max and with the sounds turned off, let's give San Andreas a go. Also, I'll check the battery life after I uh, have a play around with this. I thought Geekbench would have drained the battery a little bit more than just 2%, but yeah, okay. Alrighty, how does it look? Perfect. Not an issue. So those Geekbench scores, wait, it didn't ask me to, uh, there it is. Those Geekbench scores may not have been accurate. I may have to start using Geekbench 6 from now on, because I, I don't know, I feel like the score for Geekbench 5 on this phone is incorrect. Oh, I got a wheelie bonus. Rest in peace to his nads as well. On the absolute maximum settings, it's fine. Perfectly fine. So let's see if I can make this mad jump. Okay, it got a little bit choppy for a second, but no, it's fine. This is good. Let's do a mad stunt bonus. Haptics also work. Seriously, I didn't get a unique stunt bonus? Man, that was pretty cool. If San Andreas ran on a welcome device, which I'm still amazed that welcome device actually had the processor in it, that it did, and the RAM as well, with it being a Snapdragon in here, it's been a Snapdragon. It's doing its thing. Actually, was one of those other cheapo phones that I looked at from Happy here, didn't it have a Snapdragon 616 in it? I don't quite remember. I've tested so many phones, I just don't remember. But you can see it for yourself, San Andreas runs perfectly fine, and I didn't flip the car, which is good. So if that's San Andreas then, let's take that and crank it up to 11 and try Genshin Impact. Battery life didn't drain that much. Maybe the battery just needed to be worn in a little bit to start working a little better. I'll still stick by what I said in the battery test and stuff about this device, because it still does lack a little bit. But at the moment, it's not doing too bad. How do we think Genshin Impact is gonna run on this? Four gigs of RAM is like the minimum, I think, for this, and a quad core. And I don't think Genshin supports Android 7. I think it's only eight and up. Let's give it some time to kick in. Here we go. Okay. Uh, well, I'm at the corner of a rock. Oh, down I fell. Genshin Impact on the default settings on this. It runs. It's playable. It certainly is playable, and it looks nice enough anyways, but if I go to settings, top of the phone is extremely warm now, and let's check the graphics settings. It'll probably all be on low, most likely. Uh, okay, that happened. Now that it's loaded again, let's just now put everything up to the highest and watch it struggle. Yep. I just, I just want to turn the camera around. Oh, uh, yeah, no, that's that's not working. I just fell again, slowly, slowly falling. Okay, I'll be nice to it. All right, I've put everything down to the absolute lowest. Now that I've turned everything to the absolute lowest, put everything down to as low as I can, it runs. It's playable. Would you want to play Genshin Impact on this, though? Well, to... All three people in the world that own this device, um, you can. <laughs> 
uh, I'm fairly sure there's only about three people in the world that own this device and um, are using it as their daily driver. If someone can tell me someone who's using this as their daily driver, feel free. But Genshin works. It just doesn't really look the best. It's a little bit sort of, you know, pixelated and janky looking, but it just works. The famous words uttered by such a famous person. It just works. And battery life is now holding up. As I said, I'm still going to stick by my battery conclusion because from my testing out of the box, it was pretty iffy. And when I done the camera test, it was pretty iffy. It seems to be holding up now. So now let's check the specs of this thing. Let me go to device info hardware. And let's have a look to see what exactly is... Do, do you... Do you see something? In the spec list, this is why I didn't do the spec list at the start of the video, as I wanted to leave the specs as a bit of a mystery towards the end, because we don't have a 1920 by 1080 display, we have a 2160 by 1080 display. 4 gig DDR3, and the flash is EMMC, of course, all of the sensors just there, the Snapdragon 625 octa-core processor with the Adreno 506 GPU, Android 8.1 Oreo, and everything's all there. The screen, 2160 by 1080, not bad for the price, 18 by 9 aspect ratio. The pixel density is correct as well, 60 hertz. Multi-touch should be 10, I reckon. No, 5.0 5 5 multi-touch. 4 gig DDR3, 64 gig of internal storage. Cameras, 13 megapixel on the back, that's correct. Front, 4 megapixel camera, and that's it, confusing. The battery is 4,500 milliamp hours, so it's 4,600, then 4,700, now 4,500. Very confusing, wait to the teardown. Sensor-wise, around the CPU, about 35, 36 degrees roughly. It is quite warm on the back, and it did heat up considerably during gaming and more intensive tasks, but for the most part, it's okay. You're gonna feel it because it's just all plastic. But hopefully there's some cooling implemented in this thing. Hopefully there is anyways. Sensors, we have everything but a barometer. 25 sensors. Well, I'm very surprised about the screen then. So let's check CPU system info real quickly. See what we have in here. If I can take the shielding off the motherboard, I absolutely will. But if not, I don't want to break this thing. I'll just leave it all intact. I'm pretty sure we can believe that it's got a Snapdragon in it. In CPU system info, the model, the hardware, everything is all correct. System on chip doesn't tell me what system on chip it is but we know what system on chip it is why is zero zombie there <laughs> i've never seen that before memory is all correct ram is all correct the screen says 7.1 inches but you know it's a six inch display 2160 by 1080 the capacity is 4,742,785 milliamp hours this app's always wrong, just ignore it. Thermal, 27 degrees in this, but 30-ish sounds a little bit more correct. All the sensors just there, which is, yeah, quite a lot. Wow. Yeah, there, there's a lot. Just keeps going. It goes to show that the actual hardware of this phone is quite decent. It's just made by a company that we've never heard of before. Could it be using a motherboard from another phone and then repurposed into a new shell? No idea. We'll have to see when we get to the teardown. But cameras, 13 megapixel for the back and 4 megapixel for the front, which is very confusing. And if you're also wondering as well with open camera, I can only select the main rear camera and the main front camera. I can't select any of the sub cameras. It's a matter of at the moment believing that they are depth sensors. When I tear it down, I'll take out those cameras and see if I can still achieve the same effects with everything. One last thing that I want to do is open up Quick Shortcut Maker and just see if there's anything that might be hidden within the system that we might want to open up. Like Artisan's Launcher is probably what this launcher is called. That is correct. So the launcher is called Artisan's Launcher, which isn't Artisan's from Spyro, by the way. Could be wrong there. Actually, let's see device info if it says anything. No, okay. Oh, there's easy access on here. Oh, there's an accessibility button. Didn't even know that. Where was that even hidden? Was that even in settings? Easy access is not in settings. So they've got a feature hidden away that would be helpful if you wanted to use it. There you go. Easy access. And then you've got everything right here and even custom stuff. Why didn't they include that in accessibility? I also see Freetel a lot in here, which might give us an indication of maybe the real manufacturer behind this. Engineer mode, let's try factory test. Ah, uh, okay. Is there anything that says about the cameras? Oh, okay. Well, there's only two cameras listed there. Oh, I can confirm that on the go works too. I just seen that on the go does work with that little dongle thing and you can just plug it straight into this. HB store which still doesn't work. Live Assistant, Vidhance Camera. What is this? Oh, this is the auto zoom camera. 
there doesn't look like there's anything in here that looks out of place. <laughs> Except for Hong Shit X. Well, I think that's absolutely everything that I needed to test on this phone. So I think we should jump into a conclusion and then ramble about that for another two minutes. And then we'll jump into the teardown where we can start investigating the innards of this phone. For 165 Australian dollars, with all the accessories and stuff, even though the dongle half works, I think it's worth it for a phone to play around with, for sure, absolutely. If you're going to be using this as a daily driver, or specifically for streaming, you might want to be careful because the battery life doesn't really hold up as well as it should. You are getting an AMOLED display, 2160 by 1080, 4 gigs of RAM, 64 gigs of storage, Snapdragon 625, Android 8.1, which, you know, so be it, the 4600 milliamp hour battery, which, you know, so-so, a really good rear camera and a decent front camera, and then two extra cameras, which we're not really too sure what they do as of yet, but I'll be tearing it down very soon to take a look at it. You know, you got the RGB light too. The speaker's not too bad. There's a lot to love about this device. For the price anyways, it doesn't have VOLTE, which is a bit unfortunate, but you do have dual 4G. If you wanted to do dual 4G, you absolutely can. Minimal apps that are installed on this, and luckily you can uninstall most of the other ones that are included on this by default, which is good. For the most part, it's basically stock. Another drawback that I want to bring up again is the microphone quality. While I was able to fix it during editing, just recording with the inbuilt microphones on the phone, they're not really the best and the top one doesn't quite work, but the bottom one definitely does work. But if you were to use open camera, you can use the remote and use the microphone on there to record videos if you wanted to, but it could be just my unit that suffers from this issue. I'm not too sure, but I've already mentioned it several times during the review and you've heard it during the camera test, but I've had to fix it up. But yeah, the microphones are a little bit iffy. So I have to praise this very unique streaming device called the Huibo HB01, made by a company that's probably not in business anymore. Well done to you for making a phone that is actually quite decent, to be fairly honest. If you have 165 Australian dollars laying around and you want to buy something for a novelty and want to do voice effects and all that sort of stuff, this is here. I'll leave a link in the description for you to check it out. Once again, not an affiliate link. If you want to just check that out, have a look at the phone for yourself. And obviously you've watched through this one hour and 40 minute plus long review of me uh, dicking around on this phone, then um, I'm sure you've got a fairly good idea of what this thing is capable of, what it can do and how it performs. That's the conclusion of this thing. I recommend it. <laughs> It's a fun device. I, I will admit, it is a fun device to stuff around with. I'm glad that we finally got around to reviewing this. So you got the S23 Ultra and you got this video as well that you folks donated to see. So thank you all very much for that. That's everything with the phone. Now we tear it apart. Well, first, let's check out the remote. Now, I'm not sure of the battery life on the remote. It lasted two hours, no problems. It does have an LED on it to tell you sort of when it's about to die. And there's just four Phillips head screws that hold it down together. Alrighty, we're in. Nothing really to note on the back there, just a bit of foam. And the battery capacity in this is 920 milliamp hours. And the remote is HB01R, which matches the model number of this. Got the little RGB strip along there where they shine through. The microphone just sort of sits there. It's not a binaural microphone or anything like that. It's just it picks up in one direction. Lifting off the battery, just have a bit of a model number there. Nothing too much to look at and then flipping it over we just have all of the buttons and this thing probably has something to do with the microphone most likely all right remotes back together still all works let's move to the phone i would assume that this back panel comes off first this whole big back panel would just lift straight off yep i think that's the way oh i stuck this down pretty well so it has the adhesive on both sides. On the back here, it says MP4 camera game 3D sound, don't recycle, and music HB01. Wasn't expecting that to be printed on the back. This actually does clip into place. There's a whole bunch of clips, but it's just easier to have it adhered down so then it's not gonna come off by itself. But I don't think I broke any of the clips, but that is strong adhesive though. Very, very strong adhesive. But we see the RGB strip just there and a lot of screws need to come out. So the top little bezel can come off with two screws. Also the RGB without the casing. It's pretty cool. And a phone for 160 bucks and you get RGB. Whoa. So the battery I can't see as of yet because there's the metal shielding over it. Let me take out all of the screws and then we can take a better look at inside this thing. Can pop the bottom piece off, which reveals just the one loudspeaker just there. Oh, there's four more screws underneath this one as well. With all of the screws removed, 
it is now a moment of how do we get into this thing? Because there's no guides online, I am literally just taking a guess on how to open this up. Oh, hello. Yeah, that's very brittle. That's all right. Uh, the bottom loudspeaker is just there. Nothing to note there. Alrighty. And then popping the back off. Doesn't have anything really to note in here, but we're getting closer and closer to what we really want to have a look at. Even though I broke the back, it's fine. It'll still go back together. And look at all the fingerprints too. Look at that. Wow. I don't want to take the shielding off because it's shielding that kind of is soldered straight to the motherboard. And I really don't want to destroy this. As much as I'd like to, I don't want to destroy it. And there is our battery, a 4,600 milliamp hour battery, which is all correct. As I said, it just doesn't hold up as well as it should. The type C port is glued down pretty tight. So that's not coming off. So we've got a flex ribbon going from the bottom PCB to the main motherboard. Then we have the display ribbon and the fingerprint flex ribbon, which doubles as a power button, just there as well. The RGBs are just on this little flex ribbon going all the way along there. We've got nine LEDs, bit of an odd number. Could have just done 10, but alrighty. There's the secondary microphone at the top, which also has the LED on there as well. We're nearing the cameras. The most exciting part is we're right on top of it. With all the screws removed, I should be able to just pop the motherboard out like so. There is no cooling on this. Not a bit of thermal paste or thermal pad or anything like that. It is just straight metal frame, which explains why it got a little bit toasty. Vibration motor just there. Not a coin style vibration motor. Just one of the old school ones. Earpiece at the top, which was fairly loud for what it is. Let's just quickly look at the motherboard. So everything's looking a little something like so on that side. And then going to this side, do we see anything that may tell us anything about this device, anything further than what we already know. It's got a lot of fingerprints on it. Someone uh, just sort of cobbled this together, I think. I mean, we've got P012 MB P3 just there, but that's really it. Proximity and LED as well, just there. Yeah, I won't take the shielding off. I'm more than happy to believe that it's Snapdragon 4 gigs of RAM, so uh, no problems with that. But now let's investigate these cameras. So unlike previous devices with multiple cameras, especially cheapo ones, they don't come packaged like this. And there is a code just there. If you want to Google that, you absolutely can. Here's the moment of truth. Do these have OIS? No. And no, they do not have optical image stabilization, but they definitely have really good electronic image stabilization. It's supposed to be 13 megapixel plus 13 megapixel. So I would say that is 13 megapixel main camera and 13 megapixel depth sensor. That's what I would be assuming anyways. I mean, they look like the exact same camera just stacked side by side. Maybe it is the exact same camera just there. I'm not too sure. And I can't disconnect one and then boot this phone up because they're both on the same flex ribbon. I guess I'll just conclude that it's a 13 megapixel depth sensor. That is the best conclusion I can come up with for the rear cameras, unless the codes tell me something differently. The front cameras on the other hand are also in their own little housing. We do have a code just there for that one and a code just there for that one. Not that you can see much of it, but that there looks like an ultra wide and that there looks like a depth sensor. So I have a feeling that's a 16 megapixel ultra wide and five megapixel depth sensor. It's probably not the most highest end of ultra wides. It's probably very minimal, but it definitely has a curvature to it, which would say it is wide angle. Just a better look at the cameras just there. That's looking like a wide angle and then just a depth sensor just there. I'm going to stick with that. That's everything that's going on within this phone. So no cameras are duds. They are actually all legit cameras. If you know a way of testing the cameras individually to see if they do function for something else, uh, feel free to let me know. But otherwise, I'm only going to be able to test the front cameras. So I'll go ahead and just put this back together. Something small that's just happened is the tiny little antenna connection has become unsoldered from the motherboard. So I've just got to quickly fix this. All right, with the phone pretty much back together, I'm now going to disconnect this depth sensor from the front and we'll just see if it complains with anything so i'll just see if it still work it should still work uh oh oh i didn't connect the battery in i'm an idiot all right let's open up the camera okay so we've got the front camera can we still do bokeh effects with it yes we can there is still a bokeh effect with the front camera with that one being disconnected so let's plug that in and take this one out can't connect to the camera. I would be under the assumption that the 16 megapixel camera 
it does have a slight wide angle to it. Then the secondary camera is a depth sensor, which does help ever so slightly within, you know, bokeh shots and stuff. It probably just helps make the image a bit more smoother, I would say. Everything else in this phone is pretty legit. So I don't think they chuck a fake camera in there just for the sake of it. I think there is some purpose to it. It's just a matter of what purpose does it serve. As for the rear camera as well, well, that was pretty cool. I'll just go with 13 megapixel main plus 13 megapixel depth sensor. I hope that does make sense. Uh, also, I couldn't fix the antenna because um, it just can't go back on. I tried. Well, I guess that's the teardown for this. So I'll go ahead and put this back together and show you the specs. I think we're almost done with this. Oh, that's easy. Done. Oh, wait. Now it's done. Well, it's back together and I'm pretty sure everything still all works. I'll just quickly check the rear cameras. Yep, that seems to be fine. So I'll display the full specifications right here on screen. So you get a good idea of what is inside this 165 Australian dollar streaming phone made by streamers for streamers. Is it a streaming phone? Yes, because it can stream, but you know, it's gimmicky, but I like it. That's the whole point of it. It's gimmicky and that's worth it. <laughs> Pretty decent specs for the asking price, I've got to say. If you can get around the battery issues, this is a pretty solid performer for what it is anyways. You'll have to let me know down in the comments if you think this phone is worthy of purchasing it for your collection or to play around with and mess about. Maybe if there's custom ROMs available for this, for the three people that own this phone in the entire world, um, you could do some stuff. Yeah, if you have any idea of the manufacturer or any info behind them. Also feel free to let me know because that's still a mystery to me. As I said a few times during the review, this was their first and only phone by the looks of it anyways. That is this super long video done on the streaming phone. I hope you all thoroughly enjoyed this. And this video would not have been possible without all of the generous folks displayed on screen here for donating to see this phone on one of the previous live streams. I really do appreciate it. And I hope I've given you all a very thorough and in-depth review of this thing. You folks wanted a smalls review on this. You absolutely got one. So thank you very much to everyone displayed on screen. And also thank you very much to everyone who's made it this far in the video. So if you have made it this far without using the timestamps, appreciate you. Thank you so much. I hope you really did enjoy this one, but if you had to use the timestamps included in the description of the pinned comment, that's all good. That's why they're there. So you can skip past bits where I waffle on for 10 or 15 minutes or whatever about random things. So that's completely fine. And once again, if you needed to use ad block within the video, that's completely fine as well. Since this is going to be a long video, I have a feeling that YouTube will automatically add a bunch of ads in. I'll try and minimize them down so they're not as disruptive. But if you feel that they are disruptive, you can use ad block or revanced on mobile if you need to. That's absolutely no problems. As I said, you're all doing more than enough by just simply watching my videos and just enjoying the content. So I'm very, very happy and grateful for that. Anyways, folks, I can cross this one off my to-do list. This has been a lot of work to get this video done, but I'm pretty happy with how it's turned out. Please let me know down in the comments what you thought of this video. Once again, the link is in the description if you want to take a look at this phone, not an affiliate link, just if you want to check it out. If you think it's worth purchasing, which I think it's worth to stuff around with, absolutely. Let me know if you do end up purchasing one and how it goes for you. But to that one reviewer on AliExpress that said it broke after two weeks, mine still works. You might've just got a dud one. That's okay. Well, everyone, it is time to end this video. Thank you so much to everyone who has tuned in and watched this video. I really do appreciate you all. And I honestly had a blast making this video and taking a look at this very unique device. So in sticking with unique device traditions, I think I'll be looking at a very unique device in the next video or maybe something else. I'm not quite sure, but we'll work that out. But until then, everybody, please take care, stay safe, be good people. Thank you all for being awesome. And I'll see you all in the next video, which as I said, I've got a few ideas. We'll see how they turn out. But until then, please take care and I'll see you next time. That is a long video. People who complain about long videos are gonna complain about this one for sure. If you like this content, feel free to leave a like or a dislike if you didn't. Thanks guys for watching and I'll catch you all in the next video.